it. And uh, since I realize that most of the audience here has not seen a Pintushi character processes, it's done in two stages, stage one and stage two. So I'm just showing you a Pintushi character processes in which uh, you'll know what the procedure is. And then I can show you the complication that uh, occurred. So I'll just uh, show you the video. It's done in two stages, but the two stages have been rolled into one in the film. So here you will start by seeing the mouth, the um, uh, lower lip being clamped in a Kalesion like clamp. So this is the uh, Pintucci clamp, which is being... Uh... The surgical technique consists of two stages. In the first stage, a general anesthesia with nasal intubation is preferred. A free buccal mucosal graft is dissected, bearing in mind that once removed from the mouth, the mucosa shortens by one-third in diameter. The buccal mucosa must also cover positive defects in the palpable and bulbar conjunctiva. Excessive submucosal fat is dissected away with fine scissors. The exposed the eye, two lid traction sutures are applied. If necessary, palpable and conjunctival plastic procedures must be performed. The conjunctiva and the tenon's capsule are recessed to the rectus muscles and excessive inflammatory tissue is removed. The corneal epithelium is completely removed. The oral mucosa is applied on the cornea whose epithelium is removed and sutured with dexon to the conjunctiva and to the sclera. The oral mucosa suture is completed. All blood clots are carefully removed. Antibiotic ointment is applied and lids closed. The dressing and the protective plastic shield are applied. To colonize the KP, a 50 mm incision of the skin is made in the inferior orbitopalpable circus. The orbicular muscle fibers are spread apart in the orbitopalpable septum and the KP is introduced upside down with the optical cylinder vertical in the pocket. The second stage is performed after two months. Eye hypotony is obtained and general anesthesia is induced. The colonized KP is removed from the lower lid. Now the KP is ready to be auto-transplanted in the eye. Traction sutures are inserted under the rectus muscles. In dry eyes, in order to protect the oral mucosa before KP implantation in the eye, the length of the palpable fissure is reduced with a Blaskovic lateral and the strife nasal tosorophy, leaving a central aperture for the optical cylinder. The cornea is partly exposed, dissecting the oral mucus graft from the temporal superior sector of the center. As the cornea is exposed, the KP optical cylinder site is stained with a 4 mm corneal trefine. The knife 
Three partial thickness radial incisions are made in the 2, 6 and 10 o'clock meridians. The central and the radial incisions are completed. Paris is drawn to the 6 o'clock direction and dissipated with lateral movements, followed by cryo extraction of the lens. cylinder is placed and the colonized dacron tissue and the radial incisions are secured. is secured to cover the KP and tree fine to allow passage of the anterior optical part. So this is how it looks. So this is how the Pintucci character process is done in two stages. Uh, two months apart, and the Dacron mesh gets colonized by the patient's own connective tissue. So if all goes well, the patient see, should see six by six uh, 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 post-op when the bandage is removed the next day. There is many a slip between the cup and the lip. But uh, uh, when I started this procedure in 1997, it all went well. In 98, Dr. Pintucci uh, uh, came in and we uh, did a case together where he did the first uh, stage and he went back and then I did the second stage. Now let me tell you what uh, happened. Can you see my slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, uh, let me talk about the drop capro. This was a patient who would come from Assam. He was 60 years old from Assam. One eye was thysical. The other eye had four failed PK in the past. Uh, we didn't have any experience with the Boston Kepro at that time in 98. So uneventful two-stage Pintucci Kepro in 98. The first stage was done in Mumbai as a demonstration to me by late Dr. Stefano Pintucci himself. And he was trying to explain to me, Kuresh, it's important that the buccal mucosa must be a bit thick. You don't because it thins out a lot in those two months that you keep it there. I think he took it too thick. And second stage was done by me alone around two months later. Patient did well. He had useful vision of 6 by 18 for about two years. And I was quite happy. Two years post-op, the fun started. The buccal mucosa started growing over the K-Pro. So the K-Pro was not projecting out sufficiently. The vision dropped. So there was paradise lost. He had to come all the way from Assam because no one in Assam obviously would touch him. So I excised the overgrowth. Paradise regained vision back to 6 18. Again, overgrowth in three months. Paradise once more lost. I excised it and this time decided to use mitomycin C, thinking that it would work. So paradise regained for some time. So this is how it is. This is the thick buccal mucosa that you can see. And it's overgrowing. You can see like a pinhole effect in the middle side. And then the optic completely covered with complete loss of vision. So you go from 618 to uh, perception of light. And uh, uh, I, I was annoyed because the patient was financially drained, you know. He stopped paying me after that, and I was in private practice. So I decided that now I don't want him coming back again and again, and me having to do free surgeries. I decided to cauterize the edges of the buccal mucosa after cutting it off with a heat cautery. My father's heat cautery, those which you heat in a spirit lamp. And the cautery slipped from my hand and neatly detached the optic from the aptic. If you can see, the, uh, this is the cylinder. It's like a medu vada uh, around the, uh, the cylinder is the background. So my cautery went and hit here. So the meduvada detached and the optic simply fell as what you can call a dukki or a fall into the vitreous. So there is a 3.5 or a 4 millimeter hole in the cornea through which I could see the optic on the retina. And if I look closely, I could see the optic disc also without any ophthalmoscope. Not a very good position. So I called my friend, the vitro-retinal surgeon. In those days, he was a friend. He refused to intervene, says he has never done this sort of thing before. I called Dr. Pintucci in Rome in 98. Calls to Rome cost a lot of money. He said he had done 1,200 cases, never had such a complication. Kuresh, you're a bright fellow, you'll, you'll think of something. So I remember that whenever Dr. Pintucci did demonstration surgery, he would put two K-Pros because they were owned by him. He didn't have to pay for them. So he would put a spare K-Pro, like a, a spare tire in the other eyelid. So now I removed, after two years of the first K-Pro, I removed the second K-Pro, which was safely lying dormant for two years from the lower lid of the other eye. 
and then i reflected the entire buccal mucosa i sutured the haptic of the second capro through the remaining haptic because the haptic of the first capro the meduvada part of the first capro was sitting on the cornea so through that using 5o vicral sutures i sutured the, the, the second haptic through the first haptic through the cornea and the, uh, the hole was shut because the uh, the new uh, capro projected through that and i put back the buccal mucosa after thinning it of course so that the i ensure that the new optic sticks well uh, uh, well out through that 3.5 mm hole so you can see the new optic it's sticking quite out in the lower slide or lower picture there so this is the second capro sticking well out and this is the world's only b scan which i possess showing a floating dropped capro in the vitreous cavity you see the spike of the a scan and the the pintuji smiling away from rome uh this patient lived for 10 years after the second capro was implanted patient initially recovered 624 vision then patient came back after 3 years when he got enough money for his train fare and his vision had dropped to 6 meters but that is because he had been self medication with steroid drops continuously for 3 years not my fault fundus was clearly visible i could see the first capro inside the uh, vitreous optic disc showing glaucomatous pallor but patient was able to carry out all activities of daily living at the time of the patient's death his son told me that the vision had dropped to about finger counting at 3 meters but he could eat and go to toilet by himself and the patient would occasionally complain of floaters and flashes in a trunk call to me from assam and i would tell him please ignore those floaters and flashes they are bound to occur subsequently however i, I had a drop then pintuchi died and uh, uh, his brothers took over the manufacturing of the capros and they charged me more but the quality dropped so i had a drop optic as a complication in two more cases but possibly that was due to a manufacturing defect because it occurred while i was operating not two years later and both these patients developed a retinal detachment a few months later the dropped optic was removed by the vitreous retinal surgeon that shankar netrale and the detachments in both cases were successfully repaired this is a, a, just a story i wanted to relate to you how the perils of being a, a keratoprosthesis surgeon i had gone to malaysia in kuala lumpur to do a surgery this was in 2006 i did the first stage came back two months later went and did the second stage this was a, a, a malaysian milk vendor poor man used to take a can of milk and go to house to house to deliver the milk he was a, um, uh, originally keralite um, from india but 300 years ago his ancestors were settled in malaysia he had got acid attack on his face by mistake as a case of mistake and identity and after 18 previous surgeries in kuala lumpur i restored vision to him about 624 i think and for 5 years he did uh, uh, well and i was happy and then i got a call from the uh, uh, eye surgeon in kuala lumpur says that your patient uh, uh, died and it was basically your fault because you restored sight uh, unfortunately when he was blind of course he was sitting at home but when he got back his sight he started his milk vending business again so at 4 in the morning uh, when it was still dark he took his milk cans and was crossing the road and a truck came and hammered him and knocked him off and he died because of his tubular vision only 30 degrees he didn't see the truck coming from the side so i was blamed for the so i you get blamed for everything i've been blamed for leaving unhealthy cosmetic effect in a 69 patient and here i was blamed for restoring sight and causing death of the patient at conclusion though we do see many complications while doing such major capro surgery what has helped to restore sanity to me and uh, is that we've been able to restore sight in 65% of the bilaterally blind patients who underwent the pintuchi capro since 1997 since almost 25 years it's made it all worthwhile thank you so much for your attention